a big win last night. Three home runs for the Brewers. Reese Hoskins, Willie Adamas, Jackson Churio all homered to take game one, sitting in a 61-45 and record on the season. The Braves, great record as well, second in the National League East. Good evening, everyone. Sophia Minard here at American Family Field. And with the trade deadline passing at 5 p.m. Central here today across the league, the Brewers have added another pitcher to their staff. And Frankie Montas coming from within the division from the Cincinnati Reds. The 31-year-old right-hander joining this team. And when he does, he will become the 17th different starting pitcher the Brewers will have used this season. And that will tie a franchise record. Injuries has been a huge story for the Brewers this season, specifically on their pitching staff. So they've acquired Frankie Montes to add to that pitching depth, giving up Joey Weimer from AAA and then of Jacob Junis, who we saw pitch a number of games for the Brewers here this season, along with Cash. So for Montas, a 4 and 8 record, a 5 0 1 earned run average, and 19 starts with the Reds this season. A couple of seasons for him with the Chicago White Sox, the Oakland A's, the Yankees, and then this year with Cincinnati. But he brings a lot of experience. General Manager Matt Arnold spoke about acquiring Montas and how he will impact this team here moving forward. Uh, obviously the opening day starter for another team and, and fits in really well with the type of player we were looking for. Um, really good pedigree, um, has pitched in the postseason, uh, checks a lot of boxes for us, and we think he has a chance to really help us here in the second half. Look, I think he's, he's in front of, I think, a different defense here, um, different ballpark, different environment. Um, and we really like his stuff and, and, frankly, the person. You know, I mean, I talked to him yesterday. He's really excited to be a Brewer. General Manager Matt Arnold talking about the work he and his staff did to acquire Frankie Montas. And you think about the moves that the Bay have made here in July. They acquired Aaron Savali at the early part of July, just over the weekend, added Nick Mears, who we saw make his Brewers debut last night with a scoreless inning. So as we go up to Jeff Levering and Bill Schroeder, overall, guys, that's three pitchers that Matt Arnold has had it to this staff. Again, pitching has been a huge story for this team. They want to remain in first place here in the division, so they feel Frankie Montas can help them here moving forward. Yeah, they've certainly bolstered this pitching staff, and they've gone through their fair share of arms rock, but this Frankie Montas, he's not too far removed from being a, a finalist in the Cy Young candidacy. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, uh, 2019 to 22, he had an ERA under four. It was 367, and he had shoulder surgery that started last year, and he's still coming back from that, so you figure... It's going to take him a while to get back to get settled in, but uh, he's making some strides. He hasn't used the split finger fastball as much as he did you know, before he got here. That was a really big pitch for him. A good splitter. He's got a 41% whiff rate on that pitch. And another guy, Nick Mears, outstanding work in yesterday's ball game. Three up, three down, a couple of strikeouts. The nasty curveball is going to work much better here in Milwaukee than it did in Colorado. Well, he saw a great appearance in his Brewers debut last night. As you mentioned, the Brewers offense with three home runs last night. See if they can get to Bryce Elder tonight. Joe Ross makes his return to the starting rotation for the Brewers. Can the bats stay hot? We'll find out in a matter of moments in Milwaukee. Milwaukee Brewers baseball on Valley Sports Wisconsin is brought to you by your local Wisconsin Toyota dealer. Toyota, let's go places. And by Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. One of the hotter days of the year in Milwaukee is the Brewers and the Braves in the middle game of this three-game series. Brewers winning the opener yesterday, 8-3. to three. Bryce Elder makes the start for the Atlanta Braves. Joe Ross toes the slam for the Brewers for the first time since May 20th. We'll get it going when we come back. Roof is open in Milwaukee ahead of game two of the series. Bill Schroeder and Sophia Minner. Jeff Levering with you from American Family Field. Brewers won just one game last year against the Braves. Atlanta starting lineup today very similar to yesterday. Just a couple of omissions. Ramon Laureano is going to be starting in right field. There's Jared Kelnick, the Wisconsin native. Waukesha West High School took it over four yesterday. He leads it off for Atlanta. Brewers get Joe Ross on the mound. His starting pitcher stats brought to you by Spectrum. His nine starts this year been dealing with a back injury for the last couple of months. Yeah, missed uh, over a couple of months on the injured list with that lower back strain. He only threw one inning in his last start. That was May 20th against the Mi Miami Marlins. That was in Miami. Making career start number nine against the Braves. All as a national. And we'll see how long he's going to be able to go here tonight. 
Last rehab appearance in Triple A Nashville. About 80 pitches that time out as he faces Kelnick, who's taken a rip of the first pitch of the game last night. Hacks the first one tonight, fouls it away, and off we go. Sinkers and sliders for Joe Ross. Kelnick, gap in left center. It's going to peel back to Churio for out number one. Brewers defense behind Joe Ross, Rock. Hey, let's check it out. I mean, you got Churio, Mitchell, and Freelich in the outfield. Same outfield configuration as last night. Matter of fact, same lineup defensively as last night. Ortiz, Adamas, Terang, Bowers from third to first, and Contreras back behind home plate. For Joe Ross, a quick out. Got Austin Riley now. 0 for 4 last night. He's taking a hack at that first pitch. 0 and 1. Velocity up for Joe Ross. That's usually a good sign for him. And a liner into center field, a base hit. Off the end of the bat on the slider. One out single for Austin Riley. Home plate umpire tonight is Lance Barrett. Mark Ripperger's over at first. James Jean at second base. The crew chief is Alfonso Marquez at third. Brings up Marcelo Zuna. Hit a long home run last night. One of three solo shots for Atlanta. Yeah, they can bang. They can hit homers. Weren't able to muster much else last night. First pitch strike with that slider on Ozuna. Always important to get that two seam or that sinker that he can run up there at about 95 miles an hour. That slider has been good. Every now and again, a change up, but not too many. Right down the middle, strike two. There's the arsenal for Ross. Right before he we went on the injured list, starting to sprinkle in that changeup more often, especially against the left handed hitters. Got him looking. Yeah. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Strikeout oh. number one. Oh, it's fastball. That one right at the top of the zone. The first two right down the middle. And check it out. Look where Contreras is setting up. Bit of a late call by Lance Barrett. I wasn't sure he was going to get the call or not. Come on, go ahead, ring him up. There you go. Right at the top of the zone. Here's Olson. First pitch slider for a strike. Olson 0 for 4 with three K's last night, snapping a five game hitting streak. Really fighting it in the month of July. Just 163. and fouls it back. Been an interesting year offensively for the Atlanta Braves. A lot of homers, fourth most in the National League, but batting averages are down, and there's not too many teams worried too much about that. Oh, two pitch, and it's hit foul. For Matt Olson, I mean, last year an MVP candidate, 54 home runs last year, drove in 139. See that OPS at almost a thousand. Yeah, look at it now. Of course, it's tough to back up a season like that. It's a lot to ask. Some fouls it away. Almost took it out of the glove of Contreras. 11 pitches, 11 strikes for Joe Ross. And that last one, a changeup. He throws one out of the zone here. I'm apologizing early. Line down the right field line. Foul, another strike. Yeah, sometimes you throw too many strikes, though. You don't need to be that good on a no two pitch. Because it's been a while for Joe Ross, over two months. And we talk about command and 
or lack thereof. We're not talking just about pitches out of the strike zone. We're talking about wild in the strike zone, getting too many strikes. Another 0 2. And a fly ball into shallow right. Freelich is there, makes the catch. Nothing but strikes from Joe Ross. And a zero on the top of the first inning. Brewers coming up for the first time in the home half of inning number one. Same pieces, different order for Pat Murphy tonight as Terrain Contreras and Bowers are at the top. Adamas Churio, Freelich in the middle. Hoskins, Mitchell, and Joey Ortiz rounds out that starting nine. They get the right hander, Bryce Elder, totally different from last year to this year. Yeah, he got called up today to make this start. Last time out, July 20th against St. Louis. Suffered a loss, five innings, six runs. He did strike out nine in that appearance. Terang taking a rip at that first pitch. Everybody's being aggressive in this first inning. Yeah, keep an eye on the left-handed hitters for the Brewers. They uh, they thrive against this guy. Hitting over 350 or lefties against Elder. The last season was 12 and four. The 381 ERA was an All-Star. Second half of the season, things started to peter down a bit for him. And then this year just hasn't been able to get on the right track. Doesn't throw very hard. Sinker, four seamer, slider changeup. And throws one right on the inside corner for a strike. Terang is out. Here's the landmark credit union defense. There you got Rosario, Kelnick, and Loriano in the outfield. Loriano did not start in yesterday's game. Riley Olson on the corner. Orlando Arcia and Nacho Alvarez up the middle. And Sean Murphy behind home plate once again tonight. Speaking of catchers, here's William Contreras. Bangs the first one to right field. Headed towards the line. Loriano's got it in fair territory. Two quick outs for the Brewers. A lot of early swings tonight. There were a lot of early swings last night. Eight to three game only took two hours and 14 minutes. Guys are on the attack. A lot of home runs hitting the ball game. Six total. Big difference. The Brewers hit their home runs with guys on base. Three run shot from Willie Adamas. Two run home run from Jackson Churio. Bowers fouls it away. And a bunch of hockey sticks for the Braves. Solo shots. Yeah, they're not going to hurt you too bad. Swing and a miss. There's that slider down and in. One and two on Bowers. Second straight start in the number three hole for Pat Murphy. Bowers strikes out. One, two, three, go the Brewers. A couple of K's for Elder. We're off and running in Milwaukee. Brewers and Braves here at American Family Field. The trade deadline has officially passed at 5 p.m. Central. The Brewers made it official by adding Frankie Montas from the Cincinnati Reds within the division here and talking to general manager Matt Arnold about the three acquisitions that the team made here in July. He said, we certainly feel like we addressed, addressed the needs and added depth to the pitching staff by acquiring Aaron Savali back on July 3rd, acquiring Nick Mears as a reliever over the weekend, and now they add another starter in Frankie Montas, and he feels like that move specifically, they just check a lot of boxes with what they needed. They add experience, 149 games for Frankie Montas. He's also pitched in the postseason in two seasons with the Oakland A's. A great person by all accounts in that Cincinnati Reds clubhouse. Then you're adding an excellent defense behind him here. So there's a look at the numbers for Frankie Montas. A four and eight record for him. The earned run average just over five, 78 strikeouts on the season, and the whip a 144 for him. So, in terms of when we might see him, he is not yet activated on the roster. He was scheduled to start today. So, Pat Murphy and Matt Arnold saying that we will likely see him at some point over the weekend against the Washington Nationals. But it certainly gives them more options, guys, especially when you consider they're getting Joe Ross back here tonight, pitching for the first time since May 20th. More than anything, Sophia, thank you so much. You just get the innings back. And, and for the Brewers, they've been starved to get those innings from the starters. Going to give that bullpen such a great break if they can provide some innings. You know, those uh, numbers for Monto, they take it with a grain of salt. I mean, Cincinnati, pretty good hitters ballpark. Plus, Monto's missed all of last year. Just like the growing pains for Reese Hoskins at the plate after missing all of 
last year. It's going to take a while for Montas to get back. He's got a terrific splitter. He's been throwing that pitch really well this year. A 41% whiff rate on that pitch, but hasn't been throwing it a whole lot. Maybe because he's coming back from injury. And Matt Arnold made a great point, too. Just remember the defense that's playing behind Frankie Montas in Milwaukee as opposed to the one that's playing in Cincinnati. It's a totally different story. You're more apt to pitch the contact when you have a defense like the Brewers have. Orlando R.C. at the plate. There's five pitches into the inning for Joe Ross. He's ahead of the count on one. R.C. a ground ball over Ross's head to Bryce Terang. Six pitches, three up and three down go the Braves. You want to talk about aggressive? Woo. No score, bottom of the second inning. Willie Adamas set to lead it off for the Brewers. Check out tonight's Liberty Mutual Insurance field coverage. Willie Adamas in clutch time as good as it gets in Major League Baseball. Right? Yeah, and later the uh, situation, and the more tense, it seems like he slows things down really nicely. We talked about that three run home run last night. That was late in the game. He's got eight three run home runs this year. Certainly adds to your RBI total in a hurry. And for Willie Adamas, 71 runs batted in on the season to lead the Brewers. Three for four last night. Also singled ahead of the Churio two run last. Down on the count one and two in this sequence against Elder. Hey, Elder's got a good slider so far. That's a pretty good pitch. Again, not overpowering. He uh, yeah, probably tops out at around 93. Two seamer, four seamer, the slider, which has been a good pitch so far. Swing and a miss. Fastball up in the zone. Three Ks in the first four hitters for Elder. Kind of reminds you a little bit of last night. A lot of swings and misses for the Brewers in the first few innings. That went only 92 miles an hour. That last night's starter for. The Atlanta Braves Holmes, he was getting it up there in the mid 90s. Grant Holmes struck out seven of the first nine batters he faced in the ball game. Finished up with a career high eight Ks. Churio, big swing and a miss at the slider. It's 0 1. Again, first time through. Advantage pitcher most of the time. Very little wasted movement in. Bryce Elder, Jackson Churio, last couple of days he's homered with the opposite field against Miami. It's caused a lottery power ball home run number 12 last night as he pulled the changeup. Incredible the way he's been able to figure it out at this level. Month of July is hitting 324. He thought maybe the All Star break with a few days off is going to cool him down. No shot. He got hotter. Tapper backhanded play by Elder. Look what I found. On the other hand, you got a TV. I'd like to see him try to do that again. Behind the back without even looking. And just throw the glove up there and hope and pray, right? Stuck in the glove and he got the out. Check this out. Wow. <laughs> All right. That's our T-Mobile coverage cam play of the night. Already in the second inning. Didn't even smile. I mean, you got to crack at least a grin there, right? I mean, somebody out there does. <laughs> Lighten up out there, man. I mean, we smiled. How can you not? It's a great play. Maybe he'll laugh when he gets into the dugout. Freelick, ground ball to second. One hop, easy play, Alvarez. Another three up and three down inning. Two are in the book already, no score. Well, shoot up this summer at MLBShop.com, featuring large selection of official Brewers t shirts, hats like those. Jerseys, collectibles, and more. Visit MLBShop.com to get your Brewers gear. Here's Augie. We gotta get Augie a hat. Jerry Augustine in the house. Swing and a miss by Loriano. It's great to see Augie. He's going incognito. A bunch of former Brewers in the ballpark tonight. Saw Casey McGee on the field. Jeff Jenkins we saw on the pregame show. Yeah. Now Augie. 
You and Finney too. Alumni Day. Right. Forgot about us. <laughs> but we're always here. <laughs> One and two on Ramon Laureano. Sliders on point for Joe Ross. 22 pitches so far. There's Jenks. Got him. Second strikeout for Joe Ross. Second one looking too. Yeah, these pitchers, uh, neither one of them believe in wasting pitches, do they? Plenty of the plates. Nacho Alvarez. Hitless last night, 0 for 3. 2 for 26 in his early tenure in Atlanta. Takes a strike. 24 pitches, 22 strikes for Joe Ross. Got that Brewers dugout. Different story when guys get on base, but for Joe Ross, when nobody's on, he's getting it, he's going. Yeah. Sign of confidence. Feeling good. Missed outside. A rare pitch taken for a ball. Kind of goes without showing that he is working ahead first time through. Uh, eight of nine first pitch strikes. Probably eight of nine second pitch strikes. <laughs> Ground ball past Bryce Terang. Base hit for Alvarez with one away to turn the lineup over. Not the only thing that has got by Bryce Terang this week. Yeah, he has been terrific as usual. Not a bad slider. I think Alvarez looking for it. Went down and got it, just sliced it into right field. Jared Kelnick back up. Flight the left his first time. Ball taken off the inside corner. Opposing base runners have not been as aggressive with their secondary leads against Contreras. Book got out early that he was going to be aggressive back picking. Back picking. I don't keep him close. And that's a big deal because pitchers now are limited as to how many times they can throw over to keep a guy close. Another way to keep base runners near first base. Toss to first, back is Alvarez. Had 21 stolen bases in the minor leagues this year. Double A and Triple A. Right, threw him a changeup. Backed him off the plate, ended up right down the middle. Kelnick sprays it foul. Almost into his fan club down that third base line. Not as many tonight. He pretty much had a whole section last night, didn't he? Yeah, right behind the camera well on the third base side. Down and in. Easy drive in from Waukesha. Waukesha West graduate, first round pick. Nice catch. 
Gary to Perry. Yeah, Gary down there. Do you think he caught it? I do. He caught it? Come on, Gary, make a play. Yes, sir. Well done, Gary. One hand, no glove. And he gives it to a kid. He knows even, the drill. Even better. One of our fine security folks here at the ballpark. That's awesome. Way to go, Gary. I bet his hand hurts. No way. He's not feeling it. One of the great high school basketball coaches, too, in the area. He's not going to rub it. Kelnick with a good battle. 2 2. Ground ball. Fair inside the bag. It's going to hit off the sidewall and into shallow right. Alvarez held at third as Freelich gets on it. A double for Jared Kelnick. And the Braves are set up in the third inning. And the big boys coming up. And Kelnick able to tuck that one inside the first baseline. Almost hit the bag on another changeup. Remember he backed off of that pitch early. Just out of the reach of Bowers and Freela able to grab it before Alvarez is able to score. And Austin Riley who singled his first time up. One of the three hits for Atlanta. Infield plays in on the corners back up the middle. And Riley takes a first pitch strike. Strike on Riley. Get a sense that these Braves are sitting off speed, sliders and changes. More the slider to the right handers. They've been taking a lot of fastballs. Riley, pass Bowers. The Braves are on the board. Kelnick is held at third. It's an RBI single for Austin Riley. Yeah, that was a fastball. He didn't take that, did he? Right down the middle at 96. Good velocity, but right down the middle. Another good at bat by Austin Riley. Thinking right field, able to hit it hard by Terang. Brave set up for a big inning. We've got to contend with Marcelo Zuna now and guys on base. That's a tall order. That's the thing about allowing that number nine hitter to get on. And you got to deal with the top of the order with men on base. Makes it tough. Well, last night, Marcelo Zuna hit one off the facade of X Golf in deep left. 438 feet is what it was measured. I think he may have been cheated a few feet. It was a deep shot. Only counted for one, though. You wonder how far that would have gone had X Golf not been there. That ball was barely starting on its way down. First pitch to Ozuna. Took a call third strike on a fastball back in the first inning. 25 career homers against the Brewers. Just 85 games. And he popped it up. Foul territory. And it's going to get in the seats. Good pitch in his kitchen under his hands. That's a dangerous spot against this guy. You better get it in there. If you leave it out over the plate, it's going to go off of X golf again. But. You got to tie him up. You don't want him to get his arms extended, but there's a fine line between that inside corner and too much of the plate. Good pitch, just missed. Two and one. Body was moving a lot for Contreras. Uh, 
fouled it back. Wouldn't want to make another mistake in that area. Well, both strikes have gone in that same spot. Hardest Joe Ross has had to work in this ball game so far. Breeze to the first two innings. And a good double play guy here. Get one on the ground. And a base hit to right. Gonna make it two nothing Atlanta. Four straight hits for the Braves. Out of the play with that pitch. Down the middle, up. Right about belt high and say good approach for these Atlanta Braves in this inning. A lot of opposite field base hits. And they're making good contact. Right-handed hitters, Alvarez, Riley, Ozuna, wearing out that three-four hole on the right side. Now Matt Olson. Soft line drive to right. Coming up on the 30 pitch mark in this inning for Ross. That was number 25. Missed away, a couple of near misses, but it's 2 0 on Olsen. 20 plus pitches in this inning, a six pitch inning than inning before. That helps him a bit. Got to get out of this mess though. Get a ground ball. Mentioned numbers for Olson from year one to year two. 54 homers, 139 RBIs last year, down season this year. All it takes is one swing to unlock him, though. Rolls it foul. He's got a lot of moving parts in his swing. Yeah. And this offense is going to get even better once Solaire shows up. Just traded for him today. They were hopeful to have him in the lineup, but had an airline delay. Maybe tomorrow for Solaire. Olson down the left field line. And foul. Braves trying to get the band back together from 2021. Brought back Jorge Soler, brought back Luke Jackson, traded away one of the keys to their bullpen that year, and Tyler Matzik to San Francisco. Low with a sinker. The count fills up with three balls and two strikes. Had already reacquired Eddie Rosario, who was the NLCS MVP of that 2021 run. All they need to do is bring in Jock Peterson, who basically got the whole <laughs> yeah. group back. Right. to Olsen in the dirt and he walked him so the bases are loaded five straight batters have reached Chris Hook is on his way out to chat with Ross give him a break while they discuss the plan with Murphy coming up quick message from Wendy's The Braves have switched up their plan against Joe Ross. I mean, they were looking slider first time through. Now they're all over the fastball, and you know, and, and Ross has really not been able to find the corners with it. And now the slider's been inconsistent. 
He is at 31 pitches in this sitting, and Bryce Wilson, who finished out the ball game last night, is getting ready in the Brewers bullpen. Traded away Jacob Junis, one of your long men as well, as part of the trade to get Frankie Montas. Really need a ground ball from Murphy. And a swing and a miss. He was looking slider, got it, and missed it. He had a huge hack. Good pitch, well located. Murphy fouls it away. He's in an 0-2 hole. Murphy had a home run off of Bryce Wilson in yesterday's game in the ninth inning. Got a big long swing. Now you can pitch to him, but don't make any mistakes. All star last year in Atlanta. Popped a career high 21 homers. He's in an 0 2 hole. And he struck him out. Huge strikeout for Jill Ross's third. All of a sudden, that fastball finds the corners, right? Slider, sinker, and perfect pitch on the outside corner with that two seamer. They had to get Murphy. That's a big out. Eddie Rosario's the hitter. Fly to left back in the second inning. He's the eighth man to hit against Jill Ross. In tight, nearly hit him. Game number 17 with Atlanta this year. Remember, started the season with Washington. And he rolls it foul. I haven't seen any change up in a while from Joe Ross. They see sinker slider. Well, the last ones he threw in this sitting was to Jared Kelnick. He hit it down the right field line for a double. Swing and a miss. Got the fastball by Rosario. A strike away from getting out of this mess with only two runs scoring. center field that'll score two Olsen on his way towards third he'll get there a two strike two run single by Eddie Rosario yeah that's a killer right there one strike away from getting out of it with only two runs and now a four spot tried to go in with that sinker and it leaked over the middle Ninth man to hit in the inning is Orlando Arcia. And Ross about ready to throw his 39th pitch of the inning. Strike one. Oh, it's amazing how quickly these guys make adjustments, isn't it? These big league hitters. First two innings really good. Man, this inning, nine hitters come to the plate. Well, sometimes it's very difficult for starters to get through a game with only two pitches. He's kind of put that change up in his back pocket after that Kelnick double. Crazy sinker slider. He got ahead of Rosario, couldn't finish him off. Can he finish off Orlando Arcia? some point again first appearance off the injured list when does fatigue kick in in a 42 pitch inning he throw 90 pitches his last rehab start oh. 
two and two. To third, Ortiz will go the short way, get the force out on Rosario, and the inning ends. Four runs come across on five hits for Atlanta. Now Brewers looking for a base runner, trailing 4-0. Reese Hoskins leads things off and pleased to be joined at the booth by Todd Johnson, who runs the Brewers draft and the amateur side of things. Have you caught up on any sleep yet after the Major League Baseball draft? No, not really, because we're still in the process of signing these guys and uh, <laughs> doing all that. And, of course, it overlaps with the trade deadline as well, which, you know, obviously Matt and uh, and Carl and, and uh, Matt Klein, well, those guys are grinding and aware of that. And, uh, Contact, but so yeah, it's a busy it's a busy month. July is not a not a great week for or a great month for your uh, for your sleep. What's wild is that they have kind of overlapped these things the last couple of seasons where there was a bit of a break between the two of them. Now they just go bam bam back and forth. That's hard in a front office. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is. Um, you know, we're uh, we get through it though. Uh, we got a, a lot of people that you know work really hard and put us in a good spot to be able to make decisions. Uh, both in the draft and then for you know these guys making decisions on the trade side so um, it's a it's a long month we'll just put it that way but it's it's always fun and it's always productive so. you, you have deadlines in which to uh, sign these guys right yeah. I mean is uh, is every pick under the same guidelines and, and deadlines and, and how's it all going signing your guys yeah um, yeah everybody has to be agreed um, completely through and like contract um, done and all that by uh, Thursday at uh, 4 p.m. Central uh, we're, we're working through it um, you know most of the top 10 is done um, and we're working on the the rest of the day three group and you know the third uh, 11 through 20 round guys so um, you know a lot of good discussions you know a lot a lot of kids with good choice you know with really good choices that they get to make here as far as if they want to start their pro career or you know have um, you know, either return to or, or attend a college program. Well, and before we get into specifics, but how would you rank this year's amateur draft this year compared to other years? Um, it's always tough to say that. I think you know, coming into the coming into the class, it was seen as possibly not as good a class. But I, I don't think we really know that. I mean, five years from now, we'll probably look back and you know, we'll say, oh wow, yeah, it ended up being you know better or worse or yeah, yeah. you know um, so I, I I thought it was you know an interesting class it was a good class it was really deep in high school pitching and I think our class reflected that to some extent um, and you know but we're excited about uh, the group that we were able to, to get and you know excited to see them get out and start playing for the ones that are you know hopefully going to get up to an affiliate saw 17 pitchers drafted in this year's draft uh, first round pick on outfielder though a young yeah. talented kid yeah Braylon Payne is um, he's a very interesting kid from from South Texas uh, Craig Smastro is our uh, area scout down there I knew the kid really well um, and did a really good job speaking of good jobs here's a nice piece of hitting from Garrett Mitchell for the first round pick absolutely yeah did a great job uh, Craig did and Drew Anderson the, the supervisor there of, of putting us in a good spot um, getting getting I saw him Braylon really early in the season and we had a lot of other people you know of our decision making and, and primary evaluators see him and then did a really good job of uh, putting that together with all the other information we have on these guys. Yeah Blake Burke a, uh, a first baseman at the University of Tennessee tell us a little bit about him and where you figure he's going to start out. Yeah Burke's um, just came off winning the national championship with Tennessee um, really like touted by uh, Tony Vidiello the coach there as, as as a leader one of the leaders if not the leader of that team. Um, so we're excited. Um, I, you know, <laughs> you don't always lead with the guy's defense when you're talking about first baseman, but we actually think he's going to be a pretty good defensive first baseman. And we actually, you know, we love the bat, of course. Um, you know, think he's got a chance to both be a good hitter and, and have pop, pop as well. So he's a good, really good kid. I met both of them. They came up here um, earlier or uh, earlier last week. Um, and so they're both down in Phoenix right now. Um, you know, a chance, I think, that Blake gets out to an affiliate. Obviously, that's... Uh, more Carl and Cam and Tom Flanagan's decision than mine, but you know I think that there's a decent chance he'll get out and get like kind of like Brock did last year. That's pretty exciting stuff. And the next two picks were both high school pitchers from the state of New Jersey. Yeah, yeah. Bryce uh, Message is the one who's uh, he signed already and uh, exciting. Um, he's down in Phoenix as well, so he was here um, late last week. 
Um, got to meet him and his family. He's a really, really good, really good kid. Like, really enjoyed that um, interaction. Uh, and, you know, he's, he's a good size, like 6'3", probably, you know, kind of prototype high school right-handed pitcher body with uh, with really good stuff. And, you know, we think he'll continue to develop both, you know, from a pitching perspective and then also with uh, with his execution and strike throwing and all that kind of stuff. So really exciting to uh, to see how that develops also. It's really fun watching him over by the dugouts. This one is a soft ground ball out to Alvarez and he's gonna get Bryce Terang. Just watching all the players come over and talk to him. He didn't have that during the headlights. Yeah. Look, he's got that confidence you'd like to see. Yeah, for sure. He's a confident kid. It was funny we were at dinner and he sat right down at the head of the table. So <laughs> definitely a, Does that a power mean he move. Buys? Yeah, he picked yeah, up the check, right? He should have, I mean <laughs> so but yeah, it's it's exciting. It's always a good time for the organization. Todd, get some rest once you get all these guys signed up, all right? Absolutely. Thanks a lot, guys. Todd Johnson joining us. Great draft class in the year 2024. Brewers and Braves. we got more when we come back. Stream Brewers baseball all season long on the Valley Sports app. The Brewers had a one-out double from Garrett Mitchell. First base runner of the game against Bryce Elder. Other than that, it's been that four-run third inning against Joe Ross who's back out there for another inning of work it starts just the way the top of the third inning began with Ramon Laureano struck out to open up that inning got to figure this scouting department for the Brewers there's going to be a time where they're going to be sleeping for about three straight days <laughs> I mean these guys have been on it I mean when you talk about the uh, the amateur scouts you know the major league scouts all the stuff that goes on all at the same time in baseball these days that puts a lot of pressure on all these organizations. I'm guessing that the big league staff with the trade deadline having come and gone there was not a lot of sleep going on. Terang tough play. Maybe a base hit for Laureano. He's contending with his footsteps contending with the base not easy. Yeah back in the old days I mean organizations had a lot of time in between these big dates. You know the June draft and then you had the trading deadline at the end of August and now it's all compressed into one month. Yeah. It's a lot of work. I have it on pretty good authority that there was just a couple of winks is all sleep last night. <laughs> and yeah, the pitch is a strike on Nacho Alvarez. Alvarez is the one who started that uprising in the third with a base hit. Scored on the single by Riley. Runner starts and stops. All one down and away. Ball to strike. Let's check in. Sophia's got more on Joe Ross making his return to the rotation. Yeah, as he's pitching here in the fourth, it was four minor league rehab starts for him. One with the Wisconsin Timber Rattlers, the last three coming with the Nashville Sounds. And the most recent one coming July 24th, he was able to go four and a third. The pitch count for him, 80 pitches. So obviously, you know, for him, he just wanted to get his pitch count up. It was about endurance, getting back into competition mode again. He said, you're also evaluating the results, but not putting a ton of weight into those. For him, it was more about command, execution. And he said for him, the focus for him, was really a lot of off-speed stuff. He said he focused a lot on curveballs and change-ups, so he just wanted to feel good command of all of those pitches. So again, the last two outings for him, 66 pitches, the most recent one, 80 pitches, so they feel like they've got good length here that they can uh, continue to stretch him out here as he's getting into the fourth and fifth. Well, pitch number 69 coming, a ground ball, double play ball. Adamas steps on the bag, throws to first, scoop by Bowers. That's him? two. Right, he's something, isn't he? I tell you, had one bad game here at American Family Field. That was early in the year, but other than that, he has been unbelievable. I mean, the hands, that was a tough pick. And doing all that, still keeping the foot on the bag. You don't see too many better glove men at first base than Jake Bowers. Snow cone on the end of it. That was inside the play brought to you by Freighter, the Medical College of Wisconsin. So two for the price of one, and back to the top of the order in Kelnick. And there's strike one. And the last appearance, 80 pitches. He threw half of that in the third inning alone. Sometimes you get wrapped up, you can't get yourself out of it. And the pitch clock doesn't help you with that either. You just can't, you know, walk around the mound for a second or two and 
collect yourself. Just got to keep grinding it out. There have been pitchers that have found ways to buy some time. Stepping off, maybe, you know, catchers maybe going out to have a chat, but, you know, hitters will tell you the same thing. They're not able to collect themselves and have a clubhouse meeting with themselves out of the batter's box. Kelnick, the other way to left, sends Churio back, and it's gone. Ball just kept on carrying over the yellow line, and Kelnick is two for his last two. Five nothing Atlanta and the Kelnick crew making a lot of noise. Yeah, the Braves, they switched up their approach. Now looking fastball, getting fastball. That was on the corner. And Kelnick takes it the opposite field. Pretty good power. Not bad for a leadoff hitter. Just able to drop it over the left field wall. Austin Riley, two for two, hits one to center. In the ballpark for Garrett Mitchell. And the inning ends. Kelnick, the pride of Waukesha West, hits a homer. 5 0 Atlanta. How about some fantasy camp chatter? There's four fantasy camp vets right there, Rock. Yeah. These guys are from the 2023 camp, and you now it's a week long play. Act like a big leaguer for a, a week, and you get uh, two games a day, two uniforms, and you get relationships that last a lifetime. These guys get together all the time, have a good time. There's four of them right there, all in a row, proudly wearing their Brewer jersey that they got at Fantasy Camp. You also get an equipment bag to go along with it. Yeah, you got to sign up before August 1st. That's our uniform deadline, as dictated by. The Nike company. Now, if you sign up after August 1st, you will get two jerseys. We'll loan you pants. But if you sign up before August 1st, you get that bag. And you also get the pants that you're able to keep. Your deadline's coming up. I mean, yeah. that's Thursday. Yeah, you're talking Thursday, right? Yeah. So if you're interested in fantasy camp, I would not wait any longer. Yeah, those spots go quickly. But it's a heck of a week. Two games a day, you get happy hour, you get uh, Q and A from the coaches. You know, Jeff Cirillo, Ed Cedar, you got Vinny Rettino and Tim Dillard, Greg Vaughn. The list goes on and on. Yeah, Corey Hart, J.J. Hardy, Jeff Jenkins. Contreras to left, it's going to hang up though for Rosario. And Jerry Augustine, we just saw him in the ballpark. So basically a who's who of yeah. Brewers alum. And since uh, you know Casey McGee was here today, I might have to get him in the wheel. There you go. You know who we're going after, and this is going to be a nice uh, little get a uh, Nigel Morgan. Ooh. Tony Plush. Oh man. You think he'd be a good fantasy camp coach? I know he'd be a, an entertaining piece. I think people would be fighting to get on his team. I think it would be a, a bare knuckle brawl between Eddie Cedar and Tony Plush. You couldn't put them together. Right. <laughs> That'd be amazing, though. <laughs> wow. Yeah. We have a good time. We really do. It's a week long. Phoenix, Arizona, Brewers Spring Training Complex. In the big league clubhouse before yeah. the big leaguers show up. Right. And a lot of times, you know, you know, mid January, you see some guys rolling in and out you know taking some swings and working out in the weight room get some early work on the mound swing and a miss elder is putting on a clinic tonight four strikeouts for Bryce Elder this is the 2023 version of him Willie Adamas now that you're you're tight with Snoop Dogg and he's doing the Olympics you think he'd be a coach I can't afford him <laughs> <laughs> I can't afford, afford Snoop. Come on. Yeah. He's not taking my calls either. Really? No. How dare he? Well, he's in Paris. Oh, I get that. Willie Adamas will cruise into second base with a double. It's the second double of the ball game for the Brewers. Maybe that'll ignite something from Milwaukee's offense against Elder. And breaking pitch. It didn't do a whole lot. 
And right down the middle, and Willie Adamas able to barrel it up down the line. Time to get the skunk out of the box for this Brewers offense. And they get on the board for the first time. It's about the time of the game last night when they started to swing the bats. Had to get Grant Holmes out of the ball game and then jumped on the bullpen. Jackson Churio. Bounce one back to the mound. That was the play that Elder made behind his back. That Major League trade deadline now come and gone. It was a flurry of activity as it usually is right at the end. And that series against the Marlins, you could look at that Marlins roster and go, three quarters of them are gone now. They dealt everybody. Yeah, felt like. everybody's gone. Yep. Ground ball to short. Arcia had him play perfectly. Straightens up, throws him out, inning over. Two out double by Adamas is it. Five nothing Atlantis. We go to the fifth. Cast power by Google Cloud last night. Six home runs hit. Three by the Brewers, three by the Braves. Ozuna hit one of them. That was the first one of the ball game. It's one out of two today. And a base hit and scored in the third inning. It takes ball one. Joe Ross still out there. Yeah, that one Ozuna hit might have scared some people having some uh, dinner up there at X Golf. Can you imagine trying to set up for a putt or you're on the tee box up there and wham. That's a foul ball down the third baseline. Just foul. Now when you're on the tee box and if somebody makes a little bit of noise, do you get all worked up? No. That doesn't bother me at all. Same. I mean, nothing's gonna mess up some of my bad shots. Yeah, I was just gonna say, I mean, I'm not good enough to let something like that bother me. I, I'm kind of like the more noise the better there are people that you golf with that I mean you breathe too heavy and they look at you funny <laughs> <laughs> this one popped up foul territory Contreras and now Ortiz coming in and makes the catch good communication always best to have a position player make those catches the glove more conducive to catch and pop ups Here's Olsen 0 for 1 with a walk. Yeah, that stuff wouldn't bother me. Yeah. I mean, you've played it in front of so many big crowds in your big league career. You just got to clear the mechanism, right? I mean, you have to, you know, you learn how to focus and block out every all the side distractions. And I can't use ancillary noise for any excuses for bad shots. It's always operator error on my end. Yeah. But I would imagine, you know, a baseball crashing against the glass might be a little different. Sure. Yeah, sudden noise. Got to be some serious window panes up there, too. Yeah. Not even a crack, not a dent. He's going right for lounge chair number four. That's ball four. Four pitch walk to Olson. Two walks issued by Ross, both to Matt Olson. Brings up Sean Murphy, who's 0 for 2. He and Orlando Arcia, the only two Braves that have yet to reach base. He's on that big 43 pitch third for Ross. for strike one and the unfortunate part was is that he was a pitch away from getting out of it allowing just two runs right reserve with that big hit <laughs> Brewers coming into the game seven games up on both Pittsburgh and St. Louis St. Louis gets Tommy Pham back Sent Tommy Edmond of the Dodgers. And 
Michael Kopech part of that trade too from yeah. the White Sox to L.A. Dodgers pulled off a trade to get Jack Flaherty today. Former Cardinal. Some of the bigger names you see the division standings as we speak right now both the Pirates and the Cardinals are leading their respective games as we speak. Reds were more sellers. Cubs were actually adders. Swing and a miss. A strikeout for Joe Ross. Two away for Rosario and now quick message from Gruber Law Offices. When you've been injured, you need a winning team on your side. Call Gruber Law Offices, a proud partner of your Milwaukee Brewers. One call, that's all. Ross trying to get through the fifth, 84 pitches for him. Eddie Rosario. Two runs single as part of that four run third inning. Orioles added a ton of players today. A lot of activity in the last uh, few hours, right? Last uh, half day. Seemed like teams were. You know, making deals, not announcing them so as to not have their the teams in their division to be able to make counter moves. Sure. Right? All part of the chess match of baseball, right? Rosario pops it up. Hold those cards close to the vest as Ortiz into fair territory makes the catch, and it's a zero for Joe Ross in the top of the fifth. American Family Field and we want to remind you that the Milwaukee Brewers players are committed to the community and the goal is 100% player giving in areas such as health, education, recreation and basic needs and the partnership with BCF and the fan serves as a catalyst for a lot of good across the community. So well done by all of the Brewers players and their commitment to BCF. Thanks so much Sophia. South Freelich leads it off for the Brewers. Ball on the strike. Bryce Elder has been in rhythm. This is the Elder from a year ago, not the 2024 version. Started twice against the Brewers last season, allowed just three runs over the course of 13 innings. Surrender just eight hits. Flipped into shallow center, coming on Kelnick. He makes the catch. Reese Hoskins coming up. He sits atop our Wisconsin Lottery Powerball home run leaderboard. 18 homers for Reese. Three on this home stand. Three of his four hits on this home stand have been homers. Starting to stack together really good at bat after good at bat. Again, you know, it's you, you miss a whole season. It doesn't matter when you do it. It's always, it's always going to take you a little bit of time to get back into the groove. I mean, a whole season in the big leagues with no at bats. That's tough to come back. He's starting to look like his old self again. Found that one back with four seamer in on his hands. And even tougher the older you get. Happy birthday to that new 16 year old asking for a homer. Well, Reese delivered earlier this homestand when asked to hit a homer. Didn't miss by much. Three and two. And a base hit into right center. Good piece of hitting from Hoskins. First single of the game for Milwaukee. That's a nice piece of hitting a little bit off the plate goes right with it levels the swing out let's go with the top end after contact and that's the way you level that swing out base hit for Reese good two, two strike approach 
Garrett Mitchell a double off the wall in right field his first time. Starting to get into rhythm with his swing. Back in the big leagues about a month now. Six out of 12 on this homestand for Mitchell. Head 2 0 on Elder. Trying to chip away down 5 0. And Mitchell into shallow right. Sinking fast and catching up to it and making the play is Loriano. Hey, be the first in line for 2025 Brewers season tickets with a $100 deposit. You'll be the first to secure the best seats at the best rates, plus get two complimentary tickets to a remaining 2024 regular season game. Learn more at Brewers.com slash ticket plans. Get a lot of perks becoming a season seat holder. Ortiz hits it foul. One of many perks you get to uh, MC the season seed holder luncheons, don't you? I am not a season seed holder, but I do MC those. No, yes. but I mean, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Not, not just me, there are much better guests. But you're the reason no. uh, that you would probably be a season seed holder to go to the luncheon. True, yes. To chat with Matt Arnold or some players. Right, yeah. Take a selfie with players. Exactly, right. It's a good perk. Yeah, a lot of great things you can do. Get autographs. Get into the ballpark early. Ortiz, slow chopper. Could be a tough play. And a base hit for Joey Ortiz. Any way to get men on base and then maybe somebody get a hold of one. Just put the ball in play on a 1 1 pitch. Beats it into the ground. Once it got by Elder, you knew it was going to be a tough play. That'll be a base hit. And no chance for Riley. One swing away from getting right back into it. Nice terrain, 0 for 2. And take strike one. 3 out of 19 on this homestand for Terang. He's hoping for that calendar to turn over to August. He's scuffling in the month of July. And a check swing. Didn't go. Ball and strike. has been money in these spots with runners in scoring position this year getting over 290 right back to RC up the middle steps on the bag and ends the inning hit to the wrong guy Brewers still held to nothing as we go to the sixth Milwaukee Brewers baseball on Valley Sports Wisconsin is presented in part by Northwestern Mutual, the official financial planning partner of the Milwaukee Brewers. Lovely night for a ball game, other than the score at the moment. Atlanta up 5 0 as we go to the sixth. The Brewers are in their bullpen. Our Gruber Law Offices, one call that's all called the pen, brings in the former Brave, Bryce Wilson. And Wilson pitched last night as we talked about against these Braves one inning one run get did give up a home run that was a Sean Murphy in the ninth inning game is pretty much iced at that point having some communication issues with William Contreras and Bryce has been really good out of the bullpen he's five and one out of the pen with a 342 earned run average. Looks like we've got all of our lines squared away now. With the right cord and the right cord with the operator. Put the uh, little thing in the thing. Turn it off, turn it back on again. That usually works. Yeah. Reset. Five innings from Jill Ross tonight. 
Orlando RC it takes wide ball to strike so you, after that third inning uh, it's good that Russ was able to get through five a lot of pitches in that third inning yeah almost half of his pitches in the entire outing came in that inning 43 pitches other than that pretty good did give up a home run to Kelnick in the fourth. Some things to certainly iron out, but encouraging signs for Joe Ross, that's for sure. We heard from Sophia earlier that Frankie Montas is not going to make his Brewers debut until the team gets to Washington. Freddie Peralta is going to get the ball tomorrow. It's going to be a good pitching matchup, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Chris Sale, Freddie Peralta. Arcia yanks one down the left field line. It's a fair ball. Arcia digging for two. He's going to get there. Leadoff double for Orlando Arcia. Hey, think about those two guys, and depending on how the weather is going to be tomorrow, so take another look at this one from Orlando Arcia. Yeah, hanging breaking pitch ends up right down the middle. Nearly twists foul, but. They double down the line and left. Ramon Laureano now is singled and struck out. It's a foul. You think about day games, Brewers, Braves. How can you not think about Ben Sheets in 04? 18 punch outs against the Braves. Yeah, what a night. What a day. The nasty curveball from Ben Sheets. If I'm not mistaken, I think the very next game the Atlanta Braves played was in Arizona. They got no hit. Oh, wow. We have somebody on that. Yeah, I might do that. I might do some research on that. So, excuse me, I'm just going to do a little type in here. You can do the play-by-play -play if you want, Rock. What do you think? I'd rather do the typing. <laughs> <laughs> Swing, Swing and a miss. miss. <laughs> See? What do you need me for? You got it. That was 04. May 16th, 2004. One foul back. And the very next game, they got no hit by Randy Johnson. Not just no hit, perfect game. Yeah, okay. Down in Atlanta. Tough couple of days for the Atlanta Braves. I mean, what would have happened if it was exactly the very next day? They had an off day to at least think about that Sunday 18K game. It was a strikeout of Loriano. Randy Johnson can do that to you, though. Oof. And so could Ben. A tough draw for the Braves. It's not like they had a bad lineup either. Andrew Jones could be a Hall of Famer. Probably should be a Hall of Famer. Yeah. Ball one on Alvarez. Chipper Jones got that game off. Against Ben Sheets. He was part of the perfect game, though, struck out all three times. Julio Franco playing at the age of 59. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What a career he had. Wow. Julio Franco. Got to be one of the strongest. Just pure build the way he held the bat over his head laid the bat down over his head hands held high It had to be a 40 inch bat too yeah, strong. Yep. Two and one on Alvarez fouled away show me that stance again from Julio Franco yeah, He had the uh, you know the closed stance and he held the bat up like this but the bat was like Almost perpendicular to the ground. Yeah. Or parallel, I should say. 
I had that wrong, but yeah, yeah. I mean, Straight you, get, you get the point. I mean, the guy was near 40 at the time, right? Yeah. Still strong. He might still be playing somewhere. So it popped up into shallow center. Mitchell calling off Arms, uh, should say Adamas for the out. Arcia back to second base. Julio Franco. Every kid ever at some point tried to emulate that swing. Yeah. Good luck. And he did use a heavy bat. Oh, I mean, yeah. His whole career. Fouled away by Kelnick. Julio Franco listed as playing until the age of 48. Yeah. <laughs> He retired in 2007. He had a heavy, years. big, heavy bat. The, the biggest, I think, heaviest swing weight bat that I'd ever seen was Ben Ogilvy. Really? What big, was he big barrel bat, really thin handle. You know, shaking hands with Ben Ogilvy is like putting your hands in like sandpaper. Cool. No batting gloves. Yeah, those guys with no batting gloves, they've got calluses for days. Done money. Yeah. Julio Franco is 65 years old. Again, he, he retired officially. His last game is 49 years old. 49. Yeah. September 17, 2007. He debuted in 1982. I think he was one of the last guys that was able to use a helmet without a flap, an ear flap. Sure. Yeah, he and Tim Raines, I think, were grandfathered in. Yeah. Kelnick checked the swing. Yeah, he did. Three and two. That's a fun trip down memory lane right there. Mm -hmm. Try to check the swing again. Didn't go that time, so he walks him. Two out walk to Kelnick. He's now on for a third straight plate appearance. And Austin Riley coming up. Base hit by Riley. They're going to hold RC at third as Churio gets to it quickly. And good backup by Wilson to save a run. And doing exactly what you have to do. There's no reason to stand on the mound being a spectator. You got somewhere to go, and it's a good thing. Fastball up in the zone. Riley hits it hard into left. Austin Riley with three hits tonight. Had just four hits the entire road trip until today. Again, Bryce Wilson, right place, right time to save a run. Marcel Ozuna with nowhere to put him. Bases loaded, two outs. Ten hits are ready for the... Atlanta Braves. Last night had just four hits. Three of them left the ballpark. Totally flip of the script tonight. One homer, nine hits otherwise. Zuna fouled it away at a big cut. Sweet and miss. Good cutter. One and two on Ozuna. Just looking to hit one out. Good pitch. 
pitch again. Struck him out. Gets out of a bases loaded jam without giving up a run. Well, mark your calendar for a William Contreras City Connect replica jersey at the ball game against the Reds on August 10th. Get there early. First 30,000 ticketed fans through the gates. We'll get the jersey. Grab seats by going to brewers.com slash giveaways. There's the guy, William Contreras. With that City Connect jersey coming up. The next homestand. Nice long homestand, too. You got three teams coming in. Yeah. Brewers finally making up for a very challenging road schedule up to the All-Star break. The second half is a cakewalk in terms of travel. Only one uh, West Coast trip left, right? Ground ball to short. And Arcea throws him out. Elder doing a good job today. Five and a third innings of shutout baseball. He's allowed just the four hits. Speaking of that schedule. This is what's on tap. You got the Nationals and Braves, and then that homestand Reds, Dodgers, Guardians. Dodgers and Guardians, leaders in their divisions. Two really good teams right there. And the Brewers are in a stretch where they're seeing the Braves six times in 10 days, too. Not an easy task. Nationals are playing better baseball. Won two out of three against the Brewers before the break. Found the plate by Bowers. Yeah, one West Coast trip left. That's San Francisco and Arizona. That's in September. Don't forget that trip. You go Oakland. to St. Louis, Oakland. Right, Oakland. And three in Oakland, yeah. Do you want us to give Oakland any parting shots for you? Any fond memories of the Coliseum that you'd like us to share with the ballpark before it goes bye-bye? I do know that uh, the Oakland A's, when I was with the Angels, now, we were a pretty good team, but the Oakland A's were winning 100 games a year. Yeah. The Bash Brothers, you know, that starting rotation with you know, Norris and those guys. And Bob Welch, Dave Stewart, Dennis Eckersley closing games. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we had, uh, man, we had good teams, but not good enough. There's no wild card back then. Right. The Storm was, Davis, uh, right? Yeah, it's a tough ballpark to play in. It's when it was open before they closed it up when the yeah. Raiders moved back. Right. They put Mount Davis out there. Yep. The opossum still there, so we'll bid your regards. One hopper to Arcia. And Adamas is out. Brewers go three up and three down. Six scoreless from Bryce Elder from Atlanta. Toyota game reset as we've reached the top of the seventh inning. The Braves with a four-run third and a 43-pitch inning from Jill Ross. Jared Kelnick. Good day. Double homer, a walk. Matt Olson digs in. He's walked his last two times to the plate. Bryce Wilson out for inning number two. And foul back by Olson. Murphy and then Rosario to follow in this seventh inning. Only once have the Braves been retired in order. That was the second inning. Strike two. Yeah, Joe Ross really started out well. Then that third inning came around. All started with a base hit by the number nine hitter. That started a stretch of four consecutive hits. Wilson takes high three and two. And he had a chance to get out of it, allowing just the two runs, two strikes on Eddie Rosario, and two runs single. Extended the inning, extended the lead. Wilson sprays it foul, and the Braves, meanwhile, getting a great start from Bryce Elder. And just 78 pitches through six innings. 
Back to back pretty good starts for the Atlanta Braves in this series. Swing and a miss. Olsen gone on strikes. Let's check in with Sophia downstairs, one of the Brewers' top prospects getting a promotion. That's right. Jacob Mizorowski, top prospect for Milwaukee. He's heading to AAA with the Nashville Sounds. He's put together a really good season in AA with Biloxi. 19 games for him, 79 and two-thirds innings, a 3-5 earned run average, 105 strikeouts for him, and holding opponents to a 183 average. Now, Mizorowski has already surpassed his innings from last year. He went 71 and a third so Pat Murphy and Matt Arnold spoke about that today that there is an innings limit for him they're not going to share what that inning number is but Matt Arnold said it's just sort of a case by case basis he says I don't know if we have a hard cap but certainly want to be cautious with a pitcher with the type of pedigree that Jacob Mizorowski has so the plan for him in AAA is likely to shorten the appearances try to keep an eye on that innings number not ruling out a call up guys they said uh, we'll see how he does in AAA and maybe he could be an impact for this team here down the stretch in August and September so certainly one to keep an eye on there in AAA with Jacob Mizorowski. Yeah, thanks so much Sophia we've seen that in the past where guys have been starters down in the minor leagues come up and make an impact in the Brewers bullpen late in the season. Really can't have too many guys that throw a hundred. No. No this dude's a stud yeah. too. Yeah he can bring it. Tall big tall slender right hander that has a huge upside. 67190 is what he's listed. 22 years old. Yeah. 71 innings last year, 79 and two thirds this year so far. Rosario pops it up. Ortiz in fair territory for the second out. It's all part of the calculus, right? You bring him up in AAA and see what you can do in shorter spurts. Yeah, saw him in spring training. Eye popping stuff. That's one of the great things about doing these spring training games, you know, doing them on TV, you know, we do them on, you know, radio and the uh, webcasts. You get to see some of these guys down in the minor leagues, and they are really talented. Well, and the way things have been going for the last couple of years, they make an impact at the big league level before you even know it. Yeah. Some of these kids that you bring up, and maybe they're with the team for a day and they get in there, but you've seen them at some point. So the Jackson Cheerio a couple of years ago, and you knew right away this guy's going to be something else. He's going to be a star at some point. He has come along really well, really fast this year. Ground ball to second base. Terang. Throw out Loriano and the inning ends. A couple of base hits, a couple of men left. Time to stretch in Milwaukee. Well, tonight's time of the game win is the Great Outdoor Supper Club in Key Wascom, if they call the Brewers by 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. They get 40 tickets to a Friday night game in the Miller Light Beer Pen. This offer courtesy of the Tavern League of Wisconsin and Miller Light. Jackson Churio, we were just talking about him. It's the first crack at Elder. Next pitch will be his 80th of the game. By far one of his best starts of the season. The longest outing in the big leagues this year was just six innings. Came in St. Louis at the end of June. There's a strike. This guy came in with an opponent batting average against lefties just a little less than 360. He's only given up one hit to a lefty tonight. That was Garrett Mitchell that doubled. Figured something out down in the minor leagues. Made seven starts down in AAA. Chopper foul. He has not walked the batter. He struck out six. And nobody passed second base in the game for the Brewers offense. The offense have put up 14 runs combined in the last two games. Popped up foul. Braves bullpen starts to move. Left-hander A.J. Minter. 
That's low. First walk of the game issued by Elder. Leadoff man off the Brewers. That is the first leadoff man to reach, too. Four seam fastball, just a little below the knees. Good take by Turio. This is where the Brewers uh, started scoring some runs. Seven runs in the sixth, seventh, and eighth innings. That was in yesterday's game. See if they can flip the script now. Trailing 5 0. South Freelich, the hitter. Ground ball towards the middle. Alvarez won't get anybody. Got to start somewhere. Man, limited range for Alvarez. Just not able to get there. Pretty much straight away at second base. He's able to grab it, but couldn't collect himself and get a flip over to second. That's a play Bryce Terang makes easily. And usually from his feet. Out to the mound goes Eric Abreu. He is normally the bullpen coach. Filling in as the pitching coach, Rick Kranitz away from the team. So Abreu doing the pitching coach duties for now. Hoskins the hitter. I mean one swing and the Brewers are right back in this thing. And a strike from Elder. Base hit his last time one out of two for Reese Hoskins. Hoskins fouls it back good pass. Two by Murphy. Seventh strikeout for Elder. And that's going to do it for the Brave starter. Brian Snitker out of the dugout. He's going to want the left hander to face Garrett Mitchell or at least have Pat Murphy make a move. Pitching change in Milwaukee. A.J. Minter is on to work out of the Braves bullpen. Milwaukee Brewers baseball on Valley Sports Wisconsin is brought to you by Habish Habish and Rotier personal injury attorneys national reputation hometown service and by cousin subs we believe in better left hander AJ Minter takes over for Atlanta Bryce Elder Longest appearance of this season. There's Minter, 34th appearance for the veteran lefty. Yeah, he faced a couple of times in that Mets series. Last time out, the 28th, the scoreless inning. Walked a batter, also struck out a batter. All nine runs that he's given up this year have come on homers. Six total homers. So now the Brewers are going to counter instead of Garrett Mitchell. Garrett, uh, Gary Sanchez will pinch hit. He one big swing, and Sanchez can do it in the blink of an eye. Takes ball one. There's a strike. Look for something middle in, something he can pull. Pretty good pitch right on the outside corner. Hit to left. They'll send Turio 
Brewers are on the board. A pinch hit RBI single by Gary Sanchez. Yeah, that's what he's on this team to do. Production in left against left-handed pitching, and he's able to come up big with a base hit. Change up that time, and Gary Sanchez is able to stay on it long enough and finds a hole in the left. Scum finally out of the box for the Brewers. They're on the board. RBI single for Gary Sanchez. Joey Ortiz, an infield single his last time up. Swing and a miss. Trying to bring the Brewers within one. Tease down in the count, 0 and 2. Brewers have done some great work against bullpens in the second half of this season. And wheel back to second base. Yeah, a lot of late game offense for this team all season long, really. Low, good take on the cutter. One and two. Broken back, pop up, caught. Two away. And we'll see another pinch hitter off the bench for Pat Murphy. That four seam fastball, a little in off the plate, too close to take. And it jams him relatively easy pay play for Nacho Alvarez. Andrew Monasterio off the bench to hit for Bryce Terang. Brewers have used. Two pieces off their bench and Sanchez and Monasterio in the inning. See Nick Mears, the right hander, Tyler J, the left hander, getting ready in that Brewers bullpen. Four run game, tying run in the on deck circle. Monasterio to short. Arcia goes the short way, forces out Sanchez, and the inning ends. Got one across on the pinch hit single by Sanchez. Brewers still trail five to one. Five to one Braves as we play in the eighth inning for every Brewers RBI this season. Northwestern Mutual funding five hours of childhood cancer research. Gary Sanchez, good day's work at the plate, one for one. And now Tyler J, his second appearance with the Brewers, takes over on the mound. Yeah, made his Brewers debut on Saturday against the Marlins, tossed a scoreless inning. And got sent down. And then got called right back up. And then the following day when Tyler McGee, Taylor, <laughs> McGee went on the in the injured list. That's easy for me to say. Trevor McGee, McGill. Saw Casey McGee earlier. I saw Casey today. McGee. He's got me all messed up. That's all right. Casey had a way of doing that to everybody. Alvarez swings and fouls one into the glove. It's 0 1. Trevor McGill. Sorry, Trevor. I've only been here all year. 20 saves. It's all right. Yeah. Andre Monasterio stays in the game at second base. Blake Perkins checks in at center. 0 2 to Alvarez. Down and in. And Tyler J was on his way to the minor leagues when he got called back. He was in Chicago. Driver just turned around. Services were needed. Didn't get far. Hopefully the traffic wasn't too bad.
fouled away by Alvarez. Series finale tomorrow afternoon. Freddie Peralta and Chris Sale. Sale having a heck of a year in his first season in Atlanta. Alvarez shoots and foul again. They think 13 and 3. 286 or 268. He's something else, that guy. Former Cy Young Award winner. Dealt to the Braves from the Red Sox in the offseason. 149K is back to vintage Chris Sale. Alvarez, a foul ball, and that almost got the first base umpire. Right through his wickets. And Freddie's got to control that pitch count a little bit better tomorrow. Alvarez to center. One away. A lot of deep counts for Freddie Peralta's last time out against Miami. And five and a third, 97 pitches. Six hits, five runs, three of them earned. Should be a good one tomorrow afternoon. Here's Kelnick. And he takes down and away. Two for three, double, and a homer went the other way for his home run. Adage is you want these guys to get hot once they're on their way out, but the Brewers are going to be right back down to Atlanta and see these guys next week. The magic number for the Braves this year has been four. When they score four runs or more, they are 44 and 15. That way for everybody in the big leagues when you get to four runs kind of the magic number but yeah, Brewers too. The Braves. It's a magic number for the Brewers. <laughs> Brewers when scoring at least four runs are 47 and 15. Three games better than Atlanta. Strike one on Riley. Three hits for Austin Riley tonight. And a quick 0 2. It has been a very well spread out offense for Atlanta tonight. Just about everybody involved. Everybody has been on base. Either by hit or by walk in the game. Sean Murphy was the last to join that club in the seventh inning at a base hit. And that's fouled off of Contreras. This offense last year went. They were rolling. I mean, they were hitting homers, doubles, stealing bases. Acuna and it had just an unbelievable season. Yeah. 70 stolen bases, 40 homers. First player to ever do that. And this was a relentless offense. No holes. And they're going to get Jorge Soler back. Yep. <laughs> they just traded for him. Some of these guys are not having the years that they had last year. Everybody had a career year. Riley, a fourth hit in this game. That was stung. A walk and now a single with one out for Marcelo Zuna. Oh, and you're hot, you're hot. Pitches up a little bit, outer half, and it looked like he's been trying to go to right field the whole night. Drives that one hard into right field. Had a nice approach. That's how you get out of a funk offensively, right, Rock? 
Try and go center to right. Wait on the baseball. Wait, you know, stay back. When you're thinking right field or opposite field, you have a tendency to wait back better and you're swinging at less bad pitches. Zuna with two men on and only one out. Down in the dirt. I heard a great phrase when Brewers were in Chicago from assistant hitting coach Connor Dawson talking about Bryce Terang. Let the ground be your friend. Stay where you are. Don't lunge. Mm -hmm. Keep that weight balanced. It's a great way to put it. it where it makes sense. Let the ground be your friend. Yeah, balance makes a big difference in every sport. What sport does it? It really make a big, big difference. Keep your feet underneath you. Don't be out in front. Don't wait back. A lot of guys try and keep that balance in different ways. You know, the uh, they'll, they'll cock that knee in, you know, like Paul Mato used to do. You have the high leg kick, the toe tap. It's all. A, a way for guys to get that triggering mechanism to stay balanced before they start their swing. Marcelo Zuna uses that toe tap. Lightning quick hands too. I mean his hands go from yeah. over his shoulder to impact in the blink of an eye. Swing and a miss. Good cutter, and Ozuna's gone. And pitch over the plate, but down out of the strike zone. Ozuna with back to back strikeouts. He's punched out three times tonight. A lefty lefty matchup with Olsen. 0 for 2, two walks. Hit a foul. A lot of pitches from Tyler J in this inning, twenty six. As aggressive as the Braves were in the first two innings, they have been so patient for the last six. Mm -hmm. Olsen a pop up in the shallow center. It'll be Blake Perkins putting it away. Tyler J with a zero. Strands a couple of Braves. We're at the Gerber Law Offices. One call. That's all sports. As Craig Kishan and Vinny Rotino getting set for Brewers Live post game, presented by Frederick and the Medical College of Wisconsin. Well, what a tough one. Who would have thought? Uh, you know, the pitching by Atlanta in this one would be so good against Brewer hitters. Yeah, Elder hasn't been good this yeah. year. And then the the, the four run third inning uh, by the Braves against Joe Ross, tough right there. And the Brewers are have their work cut out for him right here against Jimenez and Iglesias have been really good this year. All right, we'll go over uh, what happened in that third inning as well. Plus Joe Ross uh, making a debut for the first time since May. We'll break that one down. Hope to hear from him as well. Going to hear from Pat Murphy and get you set for game three of the series coming up tomorrow afternoon, guys. All right, thanks so much, fellas. Or Vinny, refer to Joe Jimenez, who's been lights out of this Braves bullpen. Yeah, hasn't given up a run in his last five appearances. Last time out, the 27th against the Mets. Scoreless hitting with a punch out. Great stuff. Former Detroit Tiger was there for six years. Braves got him as an ERA with Atlanta of under three, 277, and 100 career appearances. Bowers happy to see somebody other than Bryce Elder was 0 for 3 of 3 K's against Elder.
full boat on Bowers. Four for Jake Bowers. Here comes Willie Adamas. Go ahead, three run home run last night for the Brewers. He's one for three tonight with a double. I'll tell you, the way this game has gone, it seems like the lead for the Atlanta Braves should be a lot more than five to one. They have stranded 11 on the bases tonight. They're four for 12 unofficially in my scorebook. Runners in scoring position tonight. Confirmed rock. They have had men all over the bases all night. And just one three up, three down inning for the Brewers pitching staff. That was the second. Oh, the Brewers are only down by four. And it sounds like a lot, but it could be a lot worse. The Brewers have had some shots to get that next big hit, just hasn't come yet. The Brewers are one out of eight with runners in scoring position. Braves, by the way, last night only had one such at bat with a runner in scoring position. Right. That's how good Coleman Ray and the rest of the the pen was last night. A bunch of solo homers. Like Colin Ray has been terrific for two years with the Brewers. It's amazing how consistent he has been. Count on Adamas. He always puts you in a position to be able to win a game. Brewers 15 and 6 when he appears in the contest. There you go. It's ball four. Two out walk will set the stage for Jackson Churio. He's walked and scored the only run for Milwaukee. Crazy to think that after tomorrow, the next game the Brewers play will be in the month of August. Two months to go. A sprint to the finish line. Popped him up right side. And out of play. And you cannot change your roster after today. Make some waiver claims and whatnot, but there is no more trades. There's no waiver claim right. trade deadline. I mean, it's this is what you got. The roster is what it is. The 40-man roster. Fouls another one back. Oh, and two on Jackson. Struck him out. Nothing but hard stuff in the sequence. Churio strikes out, Brewers strand one. We go to the ninth in Milwaukee. Hey, join the Brewers August 18th for a special celebration of the annual Negro Leagues tribute game presented by Aurora Healthcare with a community night ticket package. You'll get a Brewers Milwaukee Bears inspired Brewers cap. Get your seats at Brewers.com slash community nights. The Milwaukee Bears inspired Brewers cap. Tyler J going out there for another inning of work. 27 pitches in that eighth. He'll get Murphy, Rosario, and Arcia if Rosario indeed hits, and it looks like someone's in the on deck area for him anyway. Here's Murphy. And here's strike one. One out of four for Sean Murphy. Braves have constructed this lineup 
and this roster so much so giving everybody extensions and sticking around and keeping the band together so to speak traded for Sean Murphy immediately inked him to a long extension ground ball towards short and base hit two strike hit for Sean Murphy yeah oh and two didn't have to be that good it was down out of the zone but Murphy drops the head of the bat on it for a base hit his second hit Bounces it right back through the middle in an 0 2 pitch. Brings up Adam Duvall, who's going to pinch hit for Rosario. Flip flop what they did last night, where Duvall started and then Rosario came in and hit for him. The ball fouls it back. So another O2 for Tyler J trying to put someone away. Sell Iglesias getting ready for the bottom of the ninth inning. 0 2 fouled away again. Another strike on an 0 2 pitch. It'll be interesting to see if the Brewers make another move in terms of bullpen or roster, or they're going to have to do something to put Frankie Montas on. Roster whenever he joins the club. 0 2. Swing and miss. Got him. Yeah, good slider. Calling it a sweeper. The sweeper or slurve, kind of a cross between a curveball and a slider. The sweeper. See it takes a strike. He's two four four today. You look at the rest of the Central Division Rock in terms of teams moving and shaking. Strike two. The Pirates added a couple of bodies. Added some relief work in Josh Walker. They kind of falefa. They did some minor things to improve their roster. Well, they were in the market to try and get somebody big to help out the offense, mm -hmm. but I mean, with the pitching that they have, well, they're going to make life difficult for a lot of people in the division. On the ground, a third. They gave one. Two double play. Fancy footwork from Andre Monasterio to avoid the slide of Sean Murphy. Good play. Go around the horn, turn two. We'll see if the Brewers have a comeback in them. Down by four, going to the bottom of the ninth. This certainly helps. Nice play by Monasterio. Trailing five to one as we go to the bottom of the ninth inning, and former foe from the Central Division, Rysel Iglesias is going to take over on the mound. Duvall stays in to play left. There's Iglesias, 22 of 24 in save opportunities. And he's converted his last 14, although this is not a save opportunity for him with a four run lead. Oh. 
Just getting some work, but certainly an opportunity for the Brewers to take a chunk out of them if possible. Big inning. Never know what may happen. Question the availability moving forward. Four scoreless appearances in a row for Iglesias. Dynamite changeup. Staying alive. He's already in his 10th big league season. Yeah. Hard to believe, isn't it? Fly ball into left for Duvall, who's camped for out number one. Six years with Cincinnati. Was a starter his first year and then moved to the bullpen. It's been a good career decision for him. 212 career saves. Year number three in Atlanta where he's had an ERA under two. Hoskins pops it up. Alvarez going out. In comes the right fielder. It's Loriano for out number two. Elder very good today for Atlanta six and a third innings of one run ball as Blake Perkins hits trying to extend the game they had two really good starts by the Braves in this series Brewers able to get to the bullpen last night not able to do it at this point tonight won two out of three against the Cubs last weekend or last week I should say starter still at a good time this one line to first base and the ball game is over the Braves draw even with the 5 1 win tonight against the Brewers and that four run third inning the undoing for Joe Ross and the Brewers tonight Brewers just not able to get anything going offensively well and yeah, win tomorrow you win the series and then hit the road again Peralta and sale the matchup tomorrow for the series finale winner takes the set 5-1 your final stick around for Brewers live it's coming your way next for Bill Schroeder Sophia Minter and our entire crew I'm Jeff Levering saying good night from Milwaukee up next on Brewers live post game Joe Ross tough comeback effort on the mound hasn't pitched since May and Atlanta made it pretty tough on him, especially in that third inning. We'll review all of that. Jared Kellenick, the Waukesha native, had a big game in front of a small gathering here that came over from the western suburb. We'll show you his big home run and hear from Pat Murphy on tonight's loss. Stay with us.